My name is Jonathan Parks, and welcome to Jonathan's Nature Craft. I must inform you that I do not live in this house by myself, but live here with other people. Sometimes other members of the household may have to walk through areas where I might be recording with other family members on the phone. If you hear any noise like that, please feel free to disregard. We are doing our best to get noise-canceling equipment, which may at least keep you from hearing exactly what is being said. Thank you for considering. Now, this is a moment when I decided I'd come on just to kind of show a little work I could do. I've been kind of carving out some dogs lately. I've been carving lately on this little German Shepherd. And over here, I've got a little Bull Terrier I've been working on as well. And it is out of Tamarind. The Shepherd is carved from Pecan. And... I hadn't been doing videos on the carving lately because I've been doing them in the mornings before work and that's kind of a time I'm still just kind of waking up and doing it to get a little relaxed before going into work but as for just how a little thing like this goes I'd like to say that last year I carved a couple of German Shepherds out of sassafras which is also like a tan wood like the color of one and sold both of them but as you'll kind of see here this is one where I've carved it out of pecan wood which is a much harder wood but still has the tan color there's probably just a few features we're going to do with the wood burner before we start to paint here but would like to kind of say that um you know, we already got the eyes in, we already got the nose in, and probably for the little muzzle, the little place where the little line comes in right below its nose, and just a little place where we're going to kind of put a little line along for the little mouth of the little German Shepherd. I'll tell you all recently about a Doberman that I carved out of Spanish cedar. I had already carved a couple of those out of walnut and already sold one of them. Still have one of them left. But the Doberman I recently carved from Spanish cedar is in the oil now. I had been kind of working on these dogs during my Woodcarvers Guild meetings. And kind of just to sort of have something to work on while I'm there just kind of communing with everybody and having little conversations about the wood and the carving and things like that but this is how we've just come along with this so far and just little things we have to do just to kind of work our way into what we have and what we do I say that um this is just where we're going to try to kind of take a little black paint and you know this video it may come in different parts you know for different sections because there's going to have to be time in between sections of the video for the paint to dry before we kind of come back and go over other parts of this so i'll kind of keep you all tuned as far as how that goes but I'd say here, of course, we're going to paint over some of the burnt places, but that'll be just fine because that's how the German Shepherd is going to come out. Of course, there's going to be times we're going to go back over some of these places and sort of put a little bit of extra time and work into the dog to kind of make it so it has a little bit more work in it for what it's going to be and become and little do we know the work shall be a process to us just to make us see what little things are going to come to be when we get all the work done with them and that's how we work along with this little 
German Shepherd dog, I say, you know, I drew the lines here around the place in the face where the black paint is supposed to end, and just to kind of get a little bit of extra work done into there, kind of put along the places here where we sort of will make the lines come even to the places where they ought to be and kind of make the work come along best as we can make it do and so with this in mind keep in your thoughts that this is how we're going to have work come along here and when it comes right down to what it's going to be take a little notion here and there just to put the work around the face and try to make it so it's going to look a little more realistic when it gets done so here you can kind of see we've painted over an eye here but there's going to come a time we're going to come back and in that little hole where the eye is probably put in a little bit of silver fabric paint from the squeeze bottle or something like that we say that this is just one little work for how we're turning out the dog and for all this little time and effort we make I say the work is coming along just fine I could tell you more about the little things I've said in the videos last video I little posted about the fur buddies I'm going to mention to you that I kind of made some pillows out of pronghorn fur with broadcloth backs and even purchase some spring buck fur off of a site but wanted to tell you all a little story about some dick dick fur that's a that is like the smallest of antelopes one that is you know in Africa and found out that those were actually dried not tanned had a little different explains to me but did find out about those furs that you know, if it's tanned, it's leather, but if it's dry, it's too much to work, it's too dry to work with, and just how he stated that those weren't for taxidermy, they were for fly ties. You know, you use fly ties for fishing, and sometimes they take certain types of fur and make little fly ties out of it that they use to lure in fish, and fishing has an is never was one of my favorite things and haven't really done it since I was a teenager so it's been a long time but that's kind of what I mentioned about that see how that goes and as you can see we've gotten about this far along on the German Shepherd and I say that the muzzle comes along comes along right and there's going to be other lines on this we're going to come back and paint another time but give this part that's just been painted a little more time to dry before we go back over other parts and add a little extra work into it you know and so i say that these are just one thing i'd like to mention to you how you know how German Shepherds have been used as police dogs and one thing I'd also like to mention to you that I had a friend tell me in a messenger a while back was that when it that you know there was a time when policemen used to use Doberman dogs and when it came to those big Doberman dogs you know that there was just something about the way they could detect guns and bombs that just kind of made them more scared. And German Shepherds wouldn't be as easily intimidated by the noise of guns and bombs. So that was kind of the reason why they started kind of 
using them as police dogs instead because they could kind of attack the victims without having so much fear and these days you know it kind of makes me think back on to when I was a kid how that it was when we took a field trip to the police station how they warned us not to pet certain dogs because they might be kind of mean as they did kind of have to use them that way just to kind of catch criminals and keep them restrained and so that's what I kind of want to say today and I'd say when we come on the next video we're going to paint the rest thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and if you haven't already please subscribe to this channel I hope to see you in the next video. Stay tuned.